million beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Being Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. Make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. Alright, so this week we are fast approaching my favorite time of year, which is spooky season and Halloween. And I love the vampire and Dracula myth, so I was inspired to do a Dracula's castle painting for today's tutorial. Really fun little silhouette that we got going on. I'm excited to take everyone through this step by step. Let's go over to our tabletops and we'll jump on in. Okay, getting started with the background step. Uh, the colors that I have on the piece of palette paper here, I have black and white, as well as cadmium orange, cadmium yellow, and cadmium red, as well as a little bit of violet, aka purple. I have four brushes that I use that come in a kit, and the relative size and shapes are what's important with these brushes. So I like to use a three quarter inch wash brush. A one inch wash brush works fine as well. And then three round brushes of varying sizes. So I have a medium sized and then two small detail, small and then smallest. These are a size 10, a size three, and a size three over zero. As I said, these guys come in a kit with all four sizes, very handy. If you'd like to see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, check the description box below. And then I have a unconventional item again today, my trusty pot lid here from the kitchen. And we are actually going to start with this. You'll need anything circular shaped that is about the size of uh, what you want your moon to be relative to your size canvas that you're using. Um, so you could do a smaller moon, but you want to have space, of course, for your castle. So you want a pretty big circle. Uh, so go ahead and search through your house and find something circular, or you could even to be fancy and use a mathematics type compass for that. All right, let's go ahead and start with our moon color, which is going to be light yellow. So I'm gonna grab my second to smallest detail brush and I'm going to blend up a little bit of light yellow with just yellow and white. And I'm really quick, just going to go around my trusty pot lid a couple times or whatever you have that is circular, perhaps it is a little dish, whatever works, a saucer. Make sure that if you did borrow something from the kitchen that you wash this thoroughly before you use it with food again. All right, and there we have a perfect circle to get us started. We're just going to start filling that in now with one size up with our medium sized brush here and that light yellow color. And we're just going to fill in that consistently with that one color. Don't have to do anything too fancy here other than just get that filled in with light yellow. And your brush strokes can kind of go every direction, but I kind of like to make it a little bit circular just with the brush strokes. And we're going to go out to cover that sketch line but it's okay if there's a little bit of scruffy texture out there still along your outside edge just getting it all filled in Right now with that first color, we can always touch things up again if you need to. Really simple though. All right, I'm going to retire that brush for now. And I'm going to grab my largest square wash brush. I'm going to do a gradation now from the inside out and cover our whole outside edge here. 
and I'm going to start with a yellow orange. I'm going to mix my yellow and orange together and I'm going to add a pinch of white as well. And I'm going to go around my moon with first a line that goes along the circle, but then we're going to kind of scruff up that texture a little bit with some sort of square brush strokes. Okay, because we want to have this loose textured pattern with our square brush coming all the way out from the center here. Kind of looks like a fun sunflower right now. Very cute. Okay. Then I want to start pulling that color out all the way around. And then I'm going to add another pinch of orange and a little bit of red. And I'll have a slightly darker red-orange color. I'm going to go around that yellow-orange with the red-orange. And there's a little bit of yellow in there still as well. But you can really start to Move your brush all around, have fun, get loose with this background. Moving my brush around pretty quick. Okay, now you can see that blend start. Looking good, and then we're going to take it a little bit darker with some more red. Got a pretty vibrant red here. I'm going to take that a little bit here into my orange. And I don't want to cover my orange completely. May have gone a little bit too much. But this is actually just the first layer, even, of color that we're going to add. So we will have an opportunity during the second part to add an additional layer onto our background, as well as going in and creating the castle part. Okay, cute. Looking good. All right, I'm rinsing my brush, and I went a little too close to the moon there. So I'm really quick, just gonna grab some more of my yellow orange for a quick little touch up. So that's all right. I will correct that more later, but I wanted to make sure everything was nice and blended. Now as well. Okay. And then in our remaining white space, I'm going to grab some purple and a little bit of black and a little bit of white, and we will create a toned down purple as our night sky color. And I'm just going to pull that here into the corners. And down to the edge here, we're going to blend that into our red a little bit. It's okay if it gets a little bit muddy with our blending of purple into orange. 
because we are again going to add a second layer of colors onto our background later. But we want all that nice consistent blend right now. The blend layer. And this is sort of a spooky sunset, so. It's okay, things get a little bit muddy because they're spooky. And in this corner as well, even though we're probably going to not see a lot of this area down here with our little spooky mountain top, all right, looks pretty good. I think I could use a little bit more red. So I just rinsed my brush and I'm coming with just red by itself. And I'm going over right over that area that did get a little brown. So that I have more the effect of the colors sort of next to each other blending rather than getting too muddy. Just, just a little bit muddy like a Halloween night after the rain. <laughs> All right, and then I'm also going to take a few brush strokes of black. Okay, my darkest color here in the background and I'm going to sneak that into the corners. covered my purple a little too much there, so I might want to add some more back, but I want to see the purple and the black. All those colors will really look nice, but I also don't want to go too far in with my black, since I want to have a pretty colorful background for my mountain to contrast against. Okay, a little bit of purple. The purple doesn't have very good opacity. So adding a little bit of white helps there. Just even a few brush strokes of purple. I might think that looks good for now. I'm going to do a super quick correction here of my initial moon with my medium brush you may not need to do this step but i just want to <laughs> correct that real quick because it's bothering me and maybe even a little bit of a correction over here as well all right and that looks good enough to step away for a bit and let this layer dry and then we'll come back and finish everything up i'll see everyone in a few hello again beautiful artists sky here with an exciting channel announcement intermediate courses are now available through youtube memberships the program is called the paint along with sky gold stars program and membership includes exclusive access to two longer tutorials per month where I take you through step-by-step step one more challenging painting. One painting, two parts. With the Gold Stars program, I'll be taking you through a more traditional painting process where we will use a reference photo and a grid sketch method. If you've been painting along with me for a while and you'd like to challenge yourself a little bit, I invite you to join us. Membership includes sized printable reference photos, access to the bi-weekly videos, which are uploaded on the first and third Thursdays of the month. Membership will also, of course, support me and the channel and allow me to keep providing the free tutorials and the intermediate program for everyone in perpetuity. To find out more information and to get signed up, simply click the join button on any of my videos or on my channel homepage. I can't wait to get creative with you. See you soon. 
Okay, welcome back artists. We have a completely dry first layer and some fresh colors on the new piece of palette paper here. So once again, I just have some black and white and then again, the same colors as before. So cadmium red, cadmium yellow, cadmium orange, and a little bit of violet. I rinsed my brushes and got some fresh water at break as well. Let's go ahead and jump on right back into it. I'm going to grab my medium sized brush and I'm going to come in here with some black and we're going to start doing the silhouette portion of our painting today. And I'm going to, with my medium sized brush, create the little mountain that my castle is going to be on. So I'm going to have a little bit of a curved line and then kind of wiggle my way down. We want it to be pretty steep and a little bit sort of like naturally curved as if this castle was just built on top of a like plateau hill, maybe one that was flattened, but still sort of natural on the sides. And then once we get our mountain shape, we're just going to fill it in with our black. Okay. A little bit of water into the paint helps everything go nice and smoothly. All right, very simple step there. Lovely. All right, let's jump into the main focal point of the painting, which is of course our castle. And I'm going to grab my second to smallest detail brush. You could use your even smallest uh, detail brush if you would prefer a little bit more control. Um, but I have been painting for many, many a year, decades in fact, and I feel comfortable with this slightly larger size because um, I've built up the dexterity. Um, but if you need a little bit more uh, of a fine point, feel free to use that. No problem there. And our little castle is going to have three main parts. And I'm going to start here in the center. And I'm just going to do one little up and down line to start. And I'm going to turn that into a rectangle. When I'm doing these small detail steps, keep in mind that if you are on a touch screen device or can access a touch screen device, you can zoom in. You just use your fingers to pull in. And then of course, remember that we are in a digital format, so you can have the benefit of fast forwarding and repeating steps as needed. But we're just gonna start really simple here with just a rectangle. And then on one side, I'm gonna do like a little pitched roof, starting to sort of build my towers here. And then a straight line down. All right, looking good. And then from up here, we're going to go out a little bit. And this is going to be like my main tower. So I'm going to do two parallel lines coming up from the sides there. And I'm going to switch to my smallest brush now because on the inside, this is an important thing to note. We want to have a little peekaboo window. And I'm going to just create a little rectangle. around where my window is going to be. And I'm going to keep the light yellow. And I know my hand touched my black, but I'm just gonna fill this section in first really quick so you guys can see the shape that I'm going for. And I'm going to be careful not to smudge anything. And so you see my little peekaboo shape there. And then we can just flatten out the top for now. And 
And as I'm building this, keep in mind that your castle doesn't have to look exactly the same as mine. Could be totally different series of shapes. We just want to think architecturally. Okay, and then I have my little peekaboo window here. I'm going to do a little horizontal line and then also a vertical line. So I want to see like there's just one light on <laughs> uh, in our tower. And then on top, I'm going to create a triangle. Just like so. And then from the triangle, I'm going to have a straight line coming up from the center. And that's going to help me build my highest little point here on my buildings, uh, witch's hat tower. And then I'm going to curve down here a little bit and sort of elongate that triangular shape. Okay, so I have one spooky tower and I'm going to make it even thinner at the top. Stay very still. Bringing it up even a little bit further. Very gently. Kind of increasing the pitch there of the shape. And then right next door, I'm going to do another straight line coming from a tower from behind. And that's going to come out a little bit. And attach to our tower as well. Okay, so we're starting to build a very complicated looking structure. And then right next door, we're going to have our next little portion. And in my mind, this area right here, right in there, is maybe like a little entrance. <laughs> and here, let me touch this up real quick. All right. And I'm going to bring a little bit of like a platform over here. Perhaps that's like the dungeons there to build my next little area and I'm going to come up here next to my tower but I don't want to go too close because um, I want to see a little peekaboo of yellow here in the center still so that we can really see the shapes and I'm just going to have a rectangle sitting on top of another rectangular shape and then we just kind of work it from there and create additional little shapes. Okay, so maybe I have another little curve back there. And then I have my multiple rectangles and architectural shapes. And I'm just going to fill them in. It's very forgiving to use silhouettes. We don't really need to worry about which is in front of which. It's just that spooky black mass silhouette of the castle. Okay, very nice. I think I'm going to bring this out a little bit further. Okay, just to add some interest to the shape and again create the spooky castle that you like you don't have to go every single shape the same as mine this is a made-up castle it's not an actual building 
just wanted it to look spooky. And then I'm going to have a little a vertical line coming from lower down and then also one connected to this tower. When I am teaching, I try to not block with my hand as much as I would like to. I know it blocks a little anyway, and I'm sorry about that. I'm working on maybe potentially introducing another camera angle for you guys. I'm gonna try a one woman operation. This cameraman doesn't even move <laughs> because it's a tripod. Um, but feel free to move your painting around and get up close and personal to it. And then at the top of my two little spires here, I'm going to have little like oval marks. So once they are as tall as you want them, not necessarily like cross tops since it's Dracula's castle and he's evil, right? So I would imagine that Dracula would have maybe just like gothic looking balls. I don't know, you can be the designer there as well. All right, but well that's looking pretty cute. And let's see here, let's just bring this out a little further. Very cute. I'm excited to see everyone's work. If you are painting along with me, I have created a Facebook group called The Art Club where you can do just that. And there's a link below to join that. Uh, you can come over there and show me your version of Dracula's castle or whatever else you're painting. I would love to see it. It's the best part of my day to see everyone's work. I love knowing that you guys are having fun painting along. All right, last little portion here of our castle. We're going to have just another part here of the what would be presumably the same building. So I'm going to do the same idea where I'm just going to build a little rectangle to start. So that was a sort of structural shape. A rectangle on top of another rectangle that would touch the foundation here. And let's see, we could even bring out maybe another level for an additional tower. You really get to get creative with this tutorial this week with your castle. But we want to have enough to where it looks like a proper proper castle, not a manor or anything like that. Very delicate, tiny steps, still using my tiny baby brush. And I'm going to build one tower here coming from this center area. Like so. And then I think I'm gonna make this guy a little tower as well. So this is gonna be a little tower. And that's gonna be a little tower. I'm just starting with triangles on top of rectangles and then coming back and sort of tidying up my shape. I know steps like this are challenging. We're taking our time here, we're not rushing. And little detail sketch steps like this are actually easier than, or, or, or are easier with a pencil. Um, but we like to stick with just paint for the Saturday classes, but for my Gold Stars membership program, we are learning how to paint from photographs over there. And we do use a pencil and we sketch. And we actually use a grid to grid out our reference photos. So it's a totally different 
ball game over there. Totally different protocols. And I think it's almost easier in a lot of ways as well. So even though it might look intimidating, I encourage you if you've tried painting along with me a couple times, really just two or three times, maybe a few more if you need to get the hang of it, uh, to check it out and challenge yourself a little bit, take your painting to the next level. And then once you learn how to paint from photographs with me, you can paint from any photograph. And I make it easy for you guys. We still just go step by step through the whole thing. And I provide the reference photos that I've sized for you. I've done a lot of the uh, brain work, I suppose. Uh, for setting it all up. And it should be an approachable price point as well. I made it about a tenth what you would pay to attend like a weekend workshop at an art center. So check it out. And YouTube takes 30%, just keep that in mind. <laughs> really appreciate it. I know some of you guys are getting good because I see your work in the art club. All right, I'm just kind of correcting my shape here. I just wanted to do two little towers there. I think we should have one more tower. The more towers, the spookier it looks. But I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna take this up just a tiny bit more exaggerated shapes today and I'm going to do a little oval on that guy too. Wow look at that how fun. All right our other little detail step is going to be our bats and those are a little bit easier and we are just going to do those with black as well and I'm going to keep my same small little brush and I'm going to do two bat shapes. So this first one I'm going to do some little curved brush strokes, very much like a seagull shape. So we have sort of like a flat M there. And then we're going to have two little additional points like so. And then underneath, little oval for the bat's body. I know this is another small detail step. This is another good time to zoom. I always start small with my shapes. That way I can adjust, make them a little bit bigger as needed. All right, and less is more with those. We don't want to overwork it too much. And then I'm going to go right next door and I'm going to do a different sort of V shape with the wings. And then I'm going to have another little curved line, just like so. And those little segmented wings that they have. Okay, and a little extra dot there for the bat's body. Very cute. And then a few little final touches here. We are almost finished. I want to take my big square brush again. Uh, and I'm going to come into my background and add any additional little brush strokes of color. Sort of starting from the center and moving out again. So I have my yellow orange that I started with here in my first little gradation coming out from my moonshine. And I'm just taking an additional little pass around everything with my square brush strokes. I'm adding that fun additional layer of color. You might be very pleased with your background and you might not even need this step. So feel free to be the judge of your own painting. Okay, and I'm 
going to do the same here with red and just kind of adding any more of those same background colors if I want to. I think the red really adds to the composition because it is Dracula. Okay, and a little bit of purple with a tiny pinch of white to make it less see-through. The purple especially I think really needs a bit of a second coat. And just kind of leaning into that fun textured feeling of today's composition. Love it. And a tiny little pinch of black too, perhaps. Here and there in the corners. With the night creeping in in a beautiful full moon. All right, and then the piece de la resistance, my favorite step is of course the pathway to the castle. So I'm going to grab my second to smallest detail brush for that again. And I think I'll start with this guy. I might use my tiny brush too. And I'm just going to mix my yellow and white together to come up with my initial moon color, which is also good for any little final touch-ups that you might need, like over there, real quick. Had to. <laughs> and then with that same color, we're going to start here at the top, let's yeah, let's start with our tiny brush actually. So I have my second to smallest on hand, but I'm gonna use my tiny to start. And I'm going to come up right to where the castle, where you would maybe enter the castle. I'm going to do a couple little brush strokes coming down like so. And then I'm going to curve to the right, keeping horizontal with my brush strokes. Tiny little brush strokes, curve to the left, and we're going to start getting a little bit wider with the brush strokes. And then back to the right, we're doing like a switch back, like it's really steep. And then working our way over, back and off the side of the canvas there. Okay, so a little bit wider and then just creeping into our actual castle, beckoning you to come and take the spooky journey to Dracula's castle. Don't do it, turn away. So spooky. <laughs> All right, very cute. And looking at my original, looks like I have one more little peak here, actually. So let me grab my second to smallest brush and just be a stickler for details here, because I know you guys will say something. <laughs> um, so I always do a version of the painting before I even start painting, and then I'm trying to copy that as I teach. Um, but I'm going to take my second to smallest brush and I'm going to add one more uh, little peak coming right from behind my uh, rightmost tower, well, rightmost main tower here. And that looks like I do have just an additional little tower shape. And honestly, I like it. I'm glad that I added that. Because less is not more when we're going with the gothic style, right? <laughs> All right, I think it looks really cute. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comments section below. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to see your work, so don't forget to join us over in the art club. And don't forget to check out the Gold Stars program if you're ready to take your art to the next level, but still have me hold your hand along the way. And that's all we have for this week's tutorial. So happy Halloween, happy painting, and until next time.